<laughs> delicious things. <laughs> leaf sell. Thanks, well, Leaf. Thank you, Lois. I, my family and I would like to thank you and tell you how honored we are to be a part of this uh, series here. And it, we'd like to thank Macomb Community College for putting it on. Um, we are very excited to be here today. Um, you know, when my sister approached me about talking about this, I, I was like, yeah, you know, I could probably talk about passies. I've been eating them for 40 plus years since I was eight years old and I'm now 54. So I thought, you know, I knew everything there was to know about a pasty. Most of the uh, pictures and video I've done, my sister did a lot of historical research on the pasty. And I actually found out that there were a lot of different things that I actually didn't know about the pasty. And I'd like to share some of those with our viewers. Um, the first thing I, I uh, never realized is how old the pasty really is. Um, my, sister, my sister found historical references going back to the 1600s in, in Europe, and specifically Britain. Um, and so it's kind of amazing that the pasty has been around for that long. Um, we make a specific pasty at Barb's it's called a Cornish pasty. It originated in Cornwall in Great Britain. And the Cornish pasty has a certain set of ingredients. That's how you know the different pasties. Historically, a Cornish pasty has originally been made up with beef, potatoes, onions, rutabaga, wrapped in a pastry dough. There are some variations of that. I've heard from different people that uh, parsnips were used or turnips were used as a, as a substitute for the rutabaga. But the, the main ingredients, beef, potatoes, and onions are always there. Um, after the pasty came to Michigan, uh, the Finns that uh, populated the mining communities changed out rutabaga to carrots. And so that, that's the variation in the pasties. And what I'd like to talk about too is how it was brought here to Michigan. Uh, historically, uh, miners from Great Britain came to the Upper Peninsula when uh, mineral deposits, large, uh, very uh, accessible mineral deposits were located there. So we had a migration of miners from Great Britain. Britain at the time had the best miners in the world. They were involved in many different continents, mining different um, minerals and different things for, the, uh, for their country. So when they came to uh, Michigan, they went to Copper Country, which is the area in between um, uh, Calumet and Houghton Hancock up in that area. That's where they initially started. And that's why that area is called Copper Country. Um, as a supplement to them, the Finns, the Swedes, and the Italians followed up to that area to work in the mines. And as they began working with each other, the pasty became a popular favorite for the miners for several different reasons. One, it had a very high caloric value. Uh, the mining, when people uh, worked in the mines, it was a very, very, difficult and tough task. And so they would, uh, um, man, for one second here, let me do this. I'm gonna show you some pictures here. You know, miners like this gentleman on the screen, and if you notice, he has a candle on his hat. That's originally how they started in the mines was with a candle. So they did these incredibly Lee, diff. Yep. We can't see your screen. Okay. Let me try and get back here. There we go. All right. Let me work it. Sorry about that. Uh, a miner like this gentleman, if you notice on his hat, he has a candle. Early miners went down into the mines with just a candle and a pickaxe and were down there in incredibly difficult and tough situations. Um, you see these pictures of the miners up on the timbers, mining a different iron ore, very dangerous. Um, I went on a mining tour up there in Calumet a couple of years ago and I actually went down into these mines and it's kind of an amazing feeling to be down in there. I was surprised to hear that there's both hot places and cold places, but the miners were doing incredibly hard work for uh, long periods of time. So you needed a meal that would last them for their, their whole entire time down there. Um, one of the other things that made um, the, uh, 
uh, pasty, a very uh, common thing amongst miners, was it was uh, made of food staples that they had uh, on regular basis that they kept around. Things that were inexpensive, readily available, and not perishable. Uh, potatoes, onions, and rutabaga, you've probably all heard of a cold cellar or a fruit cellar you can keep those vegetables down in a cold, dark place and they will stay for quite some time. And so those types of vegetables were readily available for them to use. And it made it so that they could uh, buy the stuff ahead of time, their wives could make it and cook it and have it ready for them uh, when they went to work in the morning. One of the interesting things that my sister found was that uh, a lot of times the miners put initials in their dough so that when they heated their pasty with a bunch of other miners, they knew which pasty was theirs. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, also, um, one of the other interesting things that I found was that uh, uh, pasties were made to be eaten from one end. And I'm gonna kind of get out of this here for one second. I'd like to show you what I'm talking about. Um, I found an example of this and I would like to uh, present. If you look at this pasty, it has um, a very large rolled end. The uh, uh, miners would eat that from that end only, and they would put their hands on it. It was like a handle, and they would eat up to it because they were very fearful that the mining that they did with the metals, uh, that they would be uh, poisoned by arsenic and other types of materials that they were uh, involved with the mining process. So. When you look at the pasties in the old days and, and these pasties, you generally will see like a huge uh, handle on the end. And I can't get this to work for some reason. Um, but uh, that's, uh, that's a reason for a large crust on the end of the pasty. Um, one of the other different things that allowed miners to uh, bring these down to the mines is that if you know anything about a pasty, a pasty will stay warm for hours of time and um, you could reheat them very easily. The candles on top of their helmets, they would use and they usually carried pasties down in a tin uh, or a galvanized steel bucket. And they would put the candle underneath the bucket like an oven and they could heat these pasties up down in the mine. And that way they could have a hot uh, meal while they were doing it. And uh, it just was a very interesting food. It, it became so popular because all of those factors made it the perfect lunch while they were down in the mines. Um, now I'd like to talk about the arrival of the pasty to Michigan. Um, the pasty arrived about 1840. The Cornish miners, when they immigrated to America, they arrived at that time. And then it became a favorite in the UP. In 1957, the Mackinac Bridge was completed and the pasty spread to the trolls. If you're not familiar what a troll is, everybody who lives below the bridge is a troll. And so I learned that I went to Michigan, or Northern Michigan University for a year when I was young. And they all asked me, are you, because I didn't have the A accent like a Canadian, you know, hey, how you doing there, eh? Um, they would all be like, ah, you're a troll, aren't you? And so that's how you kind of knew. And so the, the pasty, came down from the UP and became very popular down here. The only thing is, it's such a hard thing to make. It had, had not been very popular as far as multiple restaurants. My sister told me that there's about 17 pasty shops in the lower uh, part of Michigan at this time, and Barb's is one of them. Um, on May 24th, 1968, Governor Romney uh, declared that day pasty day, um, at which time, uh, they had a, a statewide pasty day and, and uh, it became a national celebration of, or a, a state celebration of the pasty. I'd also, you know, people always ask me about the, how did we get involved? And I, well, I'm showing you this. I'm gonna stop for a second. This tin pail that these uh, um, miners are eating is, is uh, representative of the tins that they would bring in the mine. And you could put a top on those wrap the pasty in a towel and heat them up with a candle and they would work very well. Um, so people always ask me, how did, how did the troll get involved with uh, the pasties? 
And I have a, a very famous great aunt and great uncle that started a pasty shop uh, up in the up in Cal in Lorium on the other side of Calumet. And uh, I'm trying to get through this here. Let me get this other part up. I lost it. Excuse me for one second. Um, so, in my, uh, my great aunt and uncle opened up a restaurant in the late sixties called Tony's and it's still going today, believe it or not. And Tony's is in Lorium, just a little bit outside of, um, uh, Calumet. And so here's a picture of the sign. Uh, these are pictures that are fairly, they're black and white now, but they're fairly, um, new, uh, so that is still going today. It's definitely owned by different people. We can't uh, I, see your screen again, Leaf. Uh oh. Okay, let me go back here. Appreciate that. And so this is Tony's uh, country kitchen where the pasty originated in my family. My aunt Tony uh, and my uncle Art are the ones who started it. And they started it in the late sixties. And um, this is a picture of my aunt Tony. If you notice the baked goods, uh, my aunt Tony was one of the best bakers I, I've ever been, uh, been around that has cooked the food and she did everything by hand. And in that case, the cakes and all of the different stuff were all homemade recipes. And my aunt and aunt Tony and uncle Art uh, continued this business for 15 years in, in uh, Lorium until they retired. Um, and here's another picture of the cakes and different things that she made. I, uh, I can tell you I have tried a lot of them and they are absolutely delicious. And this is the article about them uh, retiring. So they retired and um, I, my family and I went to visit them uh, when I was about six years old. And we went up there and my mom came back with the pasty recipe. And so uh, this is another picture. This is my uncle Art. He's uh, 92 years old right now. Um, this is my beautiful sister, Lori, and my brother, Thor. This picture was taken a couple of years ago when we were up in Copper Harbor. Um, so he's kind of the, the initiator of the pasty in our family. And so um, what happened after my parents came home, they started making pasties and I can remember it like it was yesterday. And if you know anything about a pasty, a pasty has a smell. And so when my parents were venting out the exhaust from the, the ovens in the house, the smell would spread out. And even now, if you go down to our shop and they're cooking pasties and the vents are on, it, it smells for quite a bit of distance around, the, around the, uh, our shop. And so pretty soon the neighbors, um, got, uh, wanted to have some pasties and they started talking to my parents. And so my parents decided, you know, maybe, maybe we could start doing something with this. So then once that took off, then the teachers started asking for pasties. They'd be calling my mom and dad and they would be saying, well, we don't exactly have anything bad to say about your children, but, um, we would like to order some pasties if we can get them from you. And that's kind of like the beginning. And this is a picture of my mom and my dad. The only one that's not there is my little brother, Lance. He, this is probably taken in 1969. Your picture is missing again. Oh, okay. Let me get out of here again. All right. Let me go back here. Here we go. This is a picture of my mom and dad and all of us back in about 69. My little brother's missing Lance. And this is kind of what caused our, my parents to branch out. We were, I was playing hockey. My brothers were playing hockey, which is a very expensive sport. We had a total of six children in our family and all of us were doing different things. So my parents were always looking for a little bit of extra money. So then if you want to see a cute guy, that little guy in the middle is really cute. That's me. That's a picture in our driveway. That's my sister and my, my brother, Kevin. And this is all of us when we're growing up and I'm the guy in the far right-hand corner of the screen there. 
And of course, this is the hockey pictures. And we had an ice rink in our backyard and a pool. And, uh, but uh, my parents started making the pasties. And after a period of time, it got to be so many people were asking for them. They leased out the Capri Pizzeria in Clausen back in 1984, it was, because that's when I was just about getting ready to graduate from high school. And so my parents opened up a pasty shop. And this is a picture of my mom and my dad and my aunt Gloria making pasties on the table. And in the video, if you look at all these different things, they're still there today. There's, there's very little that changed. I'll give you a little clue. The biggest thing that's changed is there's no phone on the wall like that. Uh, we have a cordless phone now. But it's it, the passies are made basically the same as we always have. This is a picture of my mom peeling onions, and she looks real happy, doesn't she? Beautiful woman. Um, but this is my favorite picture of my mother. These are the pasties. Uh, this was an article in the newspaper. And my mother and father were, were just dynamic at turning out food. In fact, I was talking about my sister. When you notice in the video that I'm going to show you at the end of this presentation, you'll see how small our restaurant is. We did catering. We did all kinds of different events, weddings and everything. You can't believe that we pumped out as much food in such a short time. And all of it was homemade. Uh, one of the things that we pride ourselves on at Barb's is that the food, we don't buy anything frozen or pre-made. Everything's made. It's all my mom and mom's recipes and my great aunts and my grandmother's recipes. And I think that that's what has allowed us the staying power to stay in the business today. This is a picture of my mother and father as they got older. I love this picture. And then this is one of my favorite pictures. This is my dad standing next to my two children. They're now 21 and 24 respectively. And my dad was this great big giant of a guy who played football at Michigan State University. And he was just a wonderful man. So I wanted to show you a little bit. And this is my mom with our twins. And uh, I, you couldn't have a better mother. And so my mom and dad spent their life from 45 on making pasties until they passed in the last several years. My siblings and I now run the business. This is my oldest brother, Eric. He's uh, the day-to-day -day guy. He's been there for 35 years. You probably make pasties in his sleep. And this is a picture of our store in Clawson. Um, it's exactly the way it's always been. And I have one more picture if I can get to it. And I thought it was important that you see all of my siblings. Um, my mother and father and Eric are on the top. My sister's on the right. My brother Kevin's on the left. On the lower left, that's me. My little brother, Lance, who's not very little, is next to me. That's my uncle, Mike. And Mike is uh, one of our families. He's uh, just like as close as you can get for an uncle. And so, and the person on the lower uh, right is my brother, Thor. And so that's kind of the story of how we got into the pasty business and how we got involved with uh, the restaurant. I think that's about it, Lois, unless you think I need to explain something else. Um, I think that's good. I mean, that was super interesting. And it really makes me hungry. Okay. Makes me want to, you know, go order some pasties. <laughs> well, we were can I just about tell you, I, I went that for this for everybody. I'm just saying you got to have these things. I went there a couple of weeks ago. And I got a couple pasties and they're really delicious. I also got some carrot cake, best carrot cake I ever had in my life and delicious chocolate chip cookies. Well, I really appreciate that. No, I, I, my, my parents are kind of known for the carrot cake too. Um, they, my people talk about it all the time. I don't, me personally, I don't like carrot cake, so I don't know how good it is, but oh, uh, I like, I like <laughs> the frosting though. The cream cheese frosting is off the chart. Mm -hmm. So it is. I, always, I could eat a whole bowl of cream cheese frosting. Um, but, we have uh, a question. Um, we have two questions. The first one is, do you ship? Uh, we get that question a lot. There's a lot of reasons why we don't, mostly because of the health department saying uh, requirements. Um, shipping pasties is, is really hard. Plus, my brother tried to figure out a way to ship pasties and have them not get destroyed. And we haven't found a good way to ship them across long distances because they would have to be frozen in, in uh, uh, dry ice to keep them cold. Uh, they just, it's a really hard thing to do to a pasty. Uh, would we consider it in the future? We probably would if we could figure out a way to do it. 
right now, I don't think that there's a cost efficient or cost effective way to send them and not have them be super overpriced. So the answer is no for right now. We have we have a whole bunch of questions coming in. Do you want to answer some of the questions now and then show the video at the end, kind of? You want to okay. do that? You just tell me when you want to show the video. And okay. Show the video. So the next question is, what's in Barb's pasties? Well, our, our pasty, is, like I said, is a Cornish pasty. It has beef, um, which is ground, round, ground chuck mixed together. It's 80-20 meat that you generally get at the store. Um, that would be a, probably a, a pretty fair consistency of it and then you have uh, potatoes onions rutabaga and my mother uh, my sister and I were talking about this originally they didn't have carrots in them but my mother put carrots in them and we're not sure how that happened because usually going back in history you'd either have one or one or the other my mother put both in and I have to be honest with you she was one of the best cooks in in the carrot I think without any of those any of those ingredients in there it's not the same pasty so that's what they have in them and someone wants to know how many varieties do you have and what is the pricing? Okay. Um, well, you'll forgive me. I'm, I'm from South Haven, so I haven't seen the latest price. I think they're right around $8. Uh, mm. and I'm I think you're right. That, I, I think that's what they are. And uh, what was the other part of the question? Um, uh, how many varieties do you have? We have, um, we make a chicken pasty, which Lois said she absolutely loved. My mm -hmm. parents came up came up with that. It, it, it's it's a big seller. If you want something a little different than beef, we do have the chicken. And also, my brother makes the vegetarian pasty with only only the vegetables in it and the dough. And so those are the three varieties that we have. We have people people ask us for venison pasties or this kind of pasty or that kind of pasty. They're really kind of hard to make because of they don't lend themselves because of the amount of. Uh, uh, fat that's in content like in tennis and stuff like that they're hard they're almost impossible to make and um the, another question is where in Clawson and what are the hours okay uh we my mom our, i said i always refer to our my restaurant as my mom and dad so you'll forgive me for that it's at 610 uh west main in Clawson. we also have another thing that just uh, we've just gotten involved with too that we wanted to spread the pasty out a little bit. Myers, uh, Myers uh, food stores approached us and we got involved with a Meyer marketplace near Beaumont Hospital. And they came to us, they have a like a food court in there that has local restaurants provide their food in there. And we've been sending pasties over there. That's also located at 13 Mile and Woodward. And if you don't have time to come to Clawson, and you're over in that area, you can pick up a pass to your piece of carrot cake from there as well. Our hours of business at my mom and dad's place is generally, and it's changing a little bit because of COVID, um, but most of the time it's uh, 11 in the morning till eight o'clock at night. And then on the weekends, on Saturday, it's, it's that time. And then on Sunday, it's noon to eight. And in the summer, we actually close on Sunday. Um. Sophie wants to know, what's the difference between a hand pie and a pasty? I think a hand pie is, is a different kind of dough. It's more, they're, they're basically the same thing. I think that you're talking about two different kinds of dough. Um, a pasty dough is a little bit different. It, 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 it is a little bit more stiffer. A hand, a hand pie is more like an apple pie from Hostess or that type of dough. They're, they're a different tasting pie and they look different. Um, Phyllis says, I love Barb's pasties and zucchini bread and carrot cake. I agree. And she says, I live close by and I just walk over. Well, and, and we love Phyllis. I, I was just telling you last night, I said, we have some of those things that like the, the zucchini bread, you don't find homemade zucchini bread around very many places. We make it. And that's the thing that kind of makes our store kind of special. Um, my uncle Mike, he's in charge of the stuffed cabbage and the stuffed peppers. You don't see a lot of stuffed cabbage and stuffed peppers and all of it is homemade. It's all made like my mother would at home at the restaurant there. So there's a lot of different things to come check out. Our menu is online. If you go to uh, Barb's Pasties on the Facebook, we also have a website too. You can, if you just Google us, you can, you can see all the different things that we offer. 
Um, Sophie also wants to know, is there anything of your pasty in your pizza? No, no. A pasty, that's kind of the amazing thing. It's kind of such a basic thing. It only has the things that I mentioned, salt and pepper, flour and lard. That, that's what makes a pasty. And that's what, it's kind of an amazing, I, I call it pasty magic. When it all cooks together, it just gives it a really good flavor. So. Um, Kathy, shout out, Kathy. Hi. Um, are there any stores that carry your pasties? The, the first one that we've even gotten involved with is that marketplace in uh, uh, Myers Marketplace on Woodward. That's our first venture and uh, it's going pretty well. Uh, we would be open to maybe doing something else. Uh, it's just something for right now we're starting off with. My mom and dad's place has always been a mom and a pop and we've always kind of prided that, pride, prided ourselves on that. You could always and I'll give you an example. People used to all the time come back and talk to my dad. My dad would be up at the cash register. He'd be like, hey, Jer, you know, you got a minute? And they would come back and talk to him. And it was kind of a very family friendly. And that's what I refer to a mom and pop. And so we tried to carry that tradition on. If you come to our store and you want to talk to my brother or my uncle and say, hey, what's going on? And, you know, they'll come up and talk to you. We think that's really important. I, I agree. Um, someone wants to know, Paula, wants to know what's the meat to potato ratio? Uh, I, I would, I, I would, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. It's kind of a family secret and we don't let it out. I would tell you <laughs> that I would tell you that there, there is a fair amount of potatoes and the, the ratio is kind of a family secret. Um, it's part of the recipe mm -hmm. and we, we, I would tell you that potatoes are definitely a, a fair amount of the, of the pasty. And I think you may have already answered this one, but what's used to make the pie crust? Uh, the pie crust is simply flour, salt, and lard. And I, I, we were talk, I, I well, can get well, behind that. I'm just saying. Well, Lois, you and I were talking about it yesterday. You know, a lot of people talk about, you know, lard. Um, all my aunts, every time you use any apple pie or anything, they always use lard. It's, it is, my mom used to say, do you want it to taste good? And she would either be talking about adding butter or adding lard. That, that's what makes uh, a very flavorful, uh, flavor filled uh, dough. And uh, so lard. Okay. And are they moist or do you have to use gravy with them? I would tell you this, most people like I, I put ketchup on mine. I've eaten, eaten them with ketchup since I was eight years old. I will occasionally put gravy. They are moist. There, there's no doubt about it. Um, you, I have had people eat them just like they are. One of the things that I saw when my sister and I and my other brother went up to Tony's a couple of years ago and we were eating in the restaurant and it was a very strange thing because you'll see different places will put different things on them. They were putting butter in the top of the pasty and letting it melt on the hot pasty down into the stuff. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought that was kind of interesting. I haven't tried it yet, but that was a big thing up in Calumet in, oh. in Lorium. So I would say that, yes, you could eat them without, but I think you'd probably enjoy them a little bit more with gravy or with ketchup. I, I, I love mine with ketchup. Um, somebody is asking, um, have you communicated with Gold Belly about shipping pasties? I know it's a company that ships all different kinds of food, but. I, I don't think we have. I, you know, we were, I, my brother, Kevin, um, he was an engineer for Chrysler, uh, he's been really big in trying to figure that out. It's, it's not, it's, we have people all the time, like in Florida that are always asking, Hey, can you ship us a couple hundred down here? And we would love to do it. We would love to have people have our pasties. I think if gold belly, I'll have to mention that to Kevin. Uh, we mm -hmm. have not talked to gold belly, but if there's some way that we could do it, the other part of it is, is cost because my brother was looking at it and and the cost is, is, makes it so high I don't know that it, people would buy them for that mm -hmm. so and it's a trade-off it's a different kind of world we're in now so yes you know, yeah different. And the other thing and the other thing that we are concerned about too is when you get that pasty is it still going to taste like a barb's pasty mm -hmm. and that's the most important thing we, we we pride ourselves on 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 our on our taste of our food and and we want that pasty to be like as if you went up to the counter and bought it mm-hmm so um do you want to uh go ahead and show the video now yes yep this is a video i made uh, about a week ago you're gonna see my brother eric 
Uh, let's see if we can get up here. We can do a few more questions at the end after the video, sure. for if there's a few more. And I'll kind of tell you what's going on here. I got to make this video full screen though, and that was the hard part for me before. Okay. And this is a potato peeler, and I, I kind of wanted to demonstrate to you that all of our stuff is made fresh. We buy all of our products from local um, uh, vegetable stores and, and sellers. Our meat is bought locally. Everything is peeled the night before, and then the next day. And that's what I'm showing you here is that every, everything is fresh. There's nothing frozen. We don't buy anything frozen. Um, that's our And so uh, that starts the process of grinding up the vegetables. And it does a heck of a job. I'm going to let the video wind on here, so I'll be quiet for a second. Those are rutabaga that he's putting in there. The carrots are up next. Onions. No potatoes. And then they'll mix that around. That's my brother, Eric, just finishing up some of the grinding. Everything's measured out. I think, you know, when I talk to people about our restaurant, you know, we live in, in or the restaurants in Clawson. We're surrounded by Roy, Royal Oak, Troy, and Birmingham. We have a lot of different restaurants. We've been in business for over 35 years. And I think it's the freshness of the food that we use that makes the difference. Everything's in-house. Mixing everything together. Leaf, is there a difference between um, cutting put the potatoes, uh, like shredding them or dicing them? Do some people there, there, do one or the other? There, there are, and and uh, um, we tend to do more slicing. There is some diced, like carrots are diced because they're smaller, but there's a mixture of sliced and diced in there. Historically, like you'll hear a lot of people talk about grandma's pasties and they'll be diced because they cut them in cubes. Unfortunately, when you're making four or 500 of them a day, dicing everything becomes an arduous task. And so it makes it quite difficult to do. So we had to kind of pick a little bit of speed over what, you know, traditionally they might have done. But uh, I think it all, I think it tastes just as good. I've had both. And uh, one of the questions in the chat was, do you make pasties every day? Yes. Yes, except for Sunday. And on occasion, we actually make them on Sunday for like, if you have a big football weekend or something, we'll make them there. But yes, they're made every day. And uh, we also carry some frozen. Um, so if people want to just have them frozen and, and put them in the freezer and have them ready, you only have to let them sit out for a day and then you cook them and they're, they're, they're very good, so. And how many do you sell in a year? And are there specific times of the year that are more busy than others? Well, I, I wish I could give you a number. Yes, there are specific times. Generally, as in any hot food, the summer months are very are, are less because people are going to the beach, they're eating subs, they're eating different things that are, and they're not hot. Um, where we really shine is from fall all the way till you know late spring. 
is when the weather's cool and, and people like to eat a hot meal, that's where pasties that we have found over the years, we really sell a lot. Christmas time, um, after the new year, when you're getting the blizzard outside and you're freezing, you come on in and have a hot pasty. It, it, it's a good thing. So. And do you grind your own meat on site? No, we do not. Um, we have a, a certain butcher that we go to and he knows exactly what we're looking for. We've been with him for years. And so they grind it just to my brother's liking. And it's a obviously USDA certified and everything. But no, we uh, according to some of the health standards, you, most people cannot grind their own meat on site. Most restaurants, it's illegal. So. This is my Uncle Mike putting the pasties on the table. Um, he's that uh, other machine was a dough sheeter. It stretches them out to about the right, right uh, thickness and, and the right shape. And then my uncle Mike will get out there and throw them all out on the table and then they'll scoop the meat on top. And we have one cup that we use, it's specific to the pasty. And our pasty is about a pound pasty, which it's a very big pasty. Um, now, I, I'm a big guy, I can eat a big one, I can eat a full one. I hear a lot of people say, you know, it's too big. But my mom and mom and dad always believed in in giving you the most. They were they wanted to make food for families that families would eat and, and affordable so that families could have it. And so that's kind of been their mission, kind of our mission going forward too. Um, so this is about uh, you know a pound of meat with a dough. And this rolling this dough over actually, there's a little bit of technique to it and. I, I have been recently making pasties for myself in South Haven because I haven't been over to Detroit in quite a while. And believe it or not, it's actually not as easy as it looks. These guys do it, make it look easy because they do it all day long, but uh, it's, it's a little more difficult than you think. In our pasties different, you don't see the big handle on the end of it, because we don't think people are going to throw away the crust. Um, we make it, you know, that, that crust will crisp up just right in the oven. So we don't have a big crust. It, it's a very tasty crust, but it's not huge like the old day pasties. All the little parts of the dough that you're cutting off around the edges, are those reused and recycled or do you just throw that out? You have to throw it out. Uh, according to health department rules because it's touching meat nothing that touches <laughs> meat can be reused also i know some bakers don't like to re-roll the dough because it doesn't act the same when you roll it the second time yes exactly once you get flour on it and it it, it gets that flour it doesn't like you can't bind a whole pile into a single piece of dough um the, they won't do it because the flour prevents the adhesion um, process. So yes, you're correct. Most bakers won't do that because you're not going to get a full sheet to stick together. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there's a lot of flour, so the dough is not sticking to the table and that's what they're doing. So now they'll start laying them out. My uncle will start cutting them all the size, take that dough and like they, that's the most, that's the smallest dough that you can get to get your fingers around it and get that pasty wrapped. The important thing is to get it sealed because if it leaks, it leaks all the all the grease and all the goodness out of the pasty. And what people don't really realize is that the pasty is actually boiling. The meat is boiled in the water vapor from the vegetables. I mean, there's no outward cooking of the meat. It, it's all in there. And that's what gives it, it its fantastic taste. And when you see my Uncle Mike, when we pull these pasties out, you'll see a little hole in the top of them. And that's to let that... Um, vapor out the water vapor out so it doesn't uh, blow out the pasty if you did nothing if you just left it without a hole in the top it, they would they, there'd be a hole in it and grease would be leaking out everywhere so do you have to cook the different types on different temperatures or different times like a chicken versus a beef yeah i i i think that uh especially like the vegetarian, they cook a lot faster. Um, if you don't have any, any, any meat, you know, you have to reach a certain temperature by code. Um, with chicken, you have to have a minimum of 165 degrees. Uh, so those pasties have to get to that. And so 
you know, we're always trying to reach those temperatures and make sure that the, the product is as safe as can be. And so the health department has set the standards and we, we meet them. And so we're most of the time we're checking to see what the temperature is so that we're killing all of the um, bacteria and everything is required by law. And then, you know, you don't want to cook them so long that you burn the pasty dough. The dough is really the, the, the hard thing to keep from burning up. If you, if you put the oven too hot, you burn it. If you don't make it, if you don't put it hot enough, you don't get up to temperature. And so it's kind of a dance a little bit with it. Um, we have someone with their hand raised. It's Larry. Do you want to unmute yourself, Larry? And um, do you have a question? Maybe not. Okay. Okay. If there's a question, um, just go ahead and put your questions in the chat. And this is my brother putting the pasties into our double oven pizza ovens the other oven right next to it that's about 600 degrees um the, the pasty oven's about 350 give or take a little bit um we have another question too what is in the chicken pasty uh the chicken pasty has potatoes onions carrots and peas with uh, with shredded chicken and how long do you cook pasties and at what temperature are, are you talking, you know, like cooking them, like we're doing it, baking them, or how, when you get them? Um, I think the question is about how they're cooked, like when you're making them. Okay. They're cooked for about an hour at, at about uh, 350 degrees. That's what they look like coming out of the oven. Um, and you can see the little grease coming out of the top. That's how you know it's a true pasty. You're getting uh, the the... It, it's not all grease. It's, it's the meat mixing with the vegetable juice and everything. It really is kind of a pasty magic. And like I was telling you, you can see the little holes on all top of them. And that's where that water vapor is bubbling out of the top of them. So that you get a nice, firm, crispy dough. And is the hole put in the top right at the very end, just before they go in the oven? Yes. My brother was doing it. If, if you watch the video, my brother was doing it right before it was going in the oven and he was popping some of the, some of them in the top. So, and so, and I think that's the end of my video right there. So those are what they look like. I mean, they're beautiful, beautiful, nice light brown. And, you know, the, the crust is what makes it. My sister and I were talking, the crust is what separates everything. Our, I think our mm -hmm. crust is some of the tastiest I've had around. It, it really is good. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, also, I think there's um, maybe a couple more questions. Does anybody have any more questions? What temperature do you, do you um, bake them in if you froze them? We live further away and we okay. bought a few of them, but I don't know exactly how to bake them now. Well, I'll tell you, there's a couple different ways. And, and I'll tell you, the first thing, you cannot just cook frozen pasties because it would take so long to bake the innards to get the meat and the potatoes and carrots when they're frozen unthawed that you'd burn the crust right off of it. So what you have to do with the frozen pasty is set it in your refrigerator overnight so that it thaws out so that it's not rock hard when you put it in the oven. And so you want that pasty to be thawed and then you just turn up your oven to about three, different people do it different ways, between 330 and 350 and you put them on a cookie sheet and it's about 25 to 30 minutes and that into your liking that pasty will get hot. What you don't wanna do is burn the crust. You're not, the pasties are cooked, everything's cooked in there. You're just trying to heat them up to your liking. Thank you. Okay, so if there's, um, if there's any other questions, just um, we'll, we'll have one more second for a few more questions. Otherwise, um, I would just like to thank um, Leaf and all of your family. I've had conversations with several of you and that's awesome. And it's, an, it, it's a really good story of a family owned business, you know, in, in um, Michigan. And, uh, and it's what this, um, what this uh, series of programs is all about is the history of food and the food traditions in Michigan. So I just encourage you to sign up for some of the other programs and, um, 
and feel free to come and join us on some of those programs too. And again, thanks to all of our sponsors and I will see you all soon. Thank you very much. Thanks Lois, appreciate it.